Okay, this is the shop that I've been working on for over a year. As you come in, it's come a long way since I last made a film. And uh, I'll just start with the machines I have. Uh, this is a Delta Milwaukee bandsaw. Sorry for the shaky camera, this is my phone that I'm using here. This bandsaw just needs a blade, but it is ready to work. Has a homemade light. Um, can be used for making curved cuts and things like that. And I'm not sure how thick it'll cut, but it's got a depth of six inches at the throat, so we can do some small resawing and things. Over here is a Dewalt radial arm saw on a stand, factory stand, and um, those. It's got a fence on the back that that has the measurements on it already, and uh, wings on the side that that fold out. Over here is a little Delta Homecraft uh, drill press, and uh, also there is a. Powermatic 24 inch scroll saw. Those are used for doing the real intricate scroll work that, um, you know, when you make the little gingerbread designs or cutting out your name or, uh, you know, I love mom or whatever. Back behind that is a Walker Turner um, jointer, six inch jointer. And what a jointer does is it takes off one edge of wood and makes it flat so that you can. Uh, run it through the table saw on the other side to get it completely flat and square and uh, then you can run it through a planer or build with it from there so you can use rough cut wood and and do things like that I've got a grinder and a buffer or wire wheels on a pedestal the workbench made of an old uh, um, bowling alley section that I got free on Craigslist. Here we have a 20 or a 12 inch delta plane wood planer so we can uh, you, you, you can plane wood to make it the thickness that you want. Um, that is not ready to use at this point because it uses 220 and um, we do have 220 run into the shop but we don't have like a real outlet yet for that but that wouldn't take much to do. Over here is a pocket mortising machine so you can uh, hide the screws that you're using to build frames, cabinets, and whatever. Here's the Unisaw. Um, it needs some additional TLC but it's pretty much in place. The table's pretty flat. Three horsepower motor. Cuts pretty well. Pretty glad to have it. Here's our wall of clamps. All, any kind of clamp you might need. The old air compressor from 1925, Champion Pneumatic Manufacturing Company. Here's a Powermatic drill press that's not in operation at this point. It needs uh, de-rusting, uh, needs work, needs help, TLC. This is an old 1935 Craftsman drill drill press. It's a floor model, so it it doesn't take up as much space on the bench or anything, but it can be moved around. Um, runs well. It probably could use some new bearings or something of the sort, but uh, as it is, it does run. Um, Over here is the Conover lathe. Uh, we got a new, we got chucks for it finally, and uh, it's still not 100% functional because we probably need to get some um, chisels and things like that to get it proper. And that's something that would only be used by people who are who know what they are doing or um, with guidance and instruction from someone who's experienced because this. This can kill people. This is a dangerous tool. Here's a sharpening wheel. 
old Black & Decker or Skill, I think actually Skill uh, belt and disc sander. And there's our hardware store basically. I got that uh, that whole thing very cheap on Craigslist. And um, we have everything in there from hinges and picture hanging stuff, nails, screws, uh, brass nuts and bolts, big bolts, lag bolts. I even have paper bags and plastic bags there so you can take what you need to your room and uh, or you know to your project and and, and um, whatever. Here's a little wooden workbench old cabinet making wood wood bench completely full of junk right now it's got the uh, the vise there and a vise down here there's my toolbox one more little drill press there that's a really awesome little drill press 1937 I believe and it runs well underneath that box of piano hammers is a, uh, a shaper. A shaper is uh, used for making moldings, different trim. It's it's kind of like a router, only it's more powerful and a lot more quiet. Um, that does run as is, but I want to clean it up and and uh, do some work on it before I put it into service. And um, at this point, I think. That is the majority of the tools that we have. Um, we need we need dust collection. That's probably the main thing we need right now. What we have is this. I don't even know what brand it is. I'm guessing it's a Harbor Freight type of knockoff. You know, uh, it may do a little for us. But I would like to get a good cyclone type setup that will really, really pick up the dust and the chips from the machines. Another thing we need is um, air filtration, which is different than dust collection. Air filtration is basically just a big air cleaner. I'd like to put it up high up there if I can, up out of the way. And uh, basically, it would have some some pre filters that we can clean, and then a fine HEPA filter of some sort. So that's what we have at this point. These tools are all fairly functional. Um, this drill, uh, this uh, radial arm saw needs a switch. Um, right now, it's truly plug and play. When you plug it in, it's on. <laughs> So it's not, uh, it just needs a switch. Those are not big things to, to deal with. Um, bandsaw needs a blade. And uh, I think, too, the switch is backwards. So when you plug it in, the light is on. But then when you turn on the machine, the saw comes on and the light goes off. So that's kind of funny. Um, these other machines, that, plane, that uh, jointer there is ready to use. That drill press does work and works well. So um, there's little little things we need, little TLC, you know. You might ask, why do I have four drill presses? Well, you can do lots of different things. Um, sometimes you can have a dedicated drill a bit size that you, um, you know, you only just have one size on there that maybe you make tons of that particular hole. Uh, another thing you can do is you have different speeds. Um, this one is multi-speed, so... I may not have to keep all four, but anyway, sometimes you want to use uh, a slower speed for metal or a slower speed for cutting uh, um, bigger drill bits like uh, hole saws, um, Forstner bits, uh, things like that. You don't want those to go too fast. You, you need a slower speed. And um, I'm envisioning, you know, if there's two or three people down here on a given evening working, and one guy is doing a whole lot of uh, work with hole saws or Forstner bits or something. Well, then the other person could use the other, the other uh, drill press for, for you know, he wouldn't have to wait or, or mess up the other guy's flow. Um, I also have a little table saw that I just took to storage yesterday. I'd like to set that up where we can pull it in and out 
when we need it and uh, maybe use that for dedicated dados so that when you know if someone's come down here and doing a lot of dado work or something the whole table saw isn't hogged up and we could have again several people doing some work um, part of the vision I have too I'm hoping you know I don't know who's gonna be who's gonna be down here I don't know if there's gonna be just the same old two or three people all the time um, or if uh, we're gonna get folks that once they hear we have a, a wood shop say oh I've been wanting to build or learn in fact today just, just today somebody said I really want to try to learn some of that stuff um, and uh, I wouldn't have really expected her to, to say that and so that's cool you know um, so maybe you know get a few people down here that want to learn just some basic basic things maybe she's never run a table saw before uh, and how cool would that be to start teaching some some basic woodworking skills you know I myself want to get into more hand tools as well like the hand chisels I want to learn dovetails um, I'd like to learn um, planing like hand planes because those aren't just archaic ways of doing things as some people think they're actually more precise uh, you get things very very close with a machine and then you take it the rest of the way with a with a hand plane of some sort um, so a lot of these machines are new to me as well I've, I've never used a jointer uh, only partially seen one used once um, so some of this stuff is new to me I've never used a, a lathe so I'm not going to be trying that lathe out myself until I have somebody who's actually done it and can give us some hints because they they really can can do some serious damage so can the jointer um, any tool can do damage if you don't use it right um, but uh, last winter we actually brought my son and his friend down here and we uh, got them on the scroll saw that's a pretty mild machine um, doesn't really grab the wood um, chance of really cutting your finger off is pretty nil because you'd actually have to really push against the, <laughs> the blade um, but we taught them respect of the machine without fear and they were able to start cutting out letters of their name and things and that was really fun um, so that's a good starter tool for younger boy you know, younger kids not just boys I should say <laughs> children uh, I'm hoping that this shop could be used for all sorts of things I know that um, we have Glenn Kaiser who's making um, cigar box guitars and banjos and things and uh, I know that he could definitely use a, a, a good a good amount of these tools um, my friend Brock is making um, amps guitar amps and and he could use this to make uh, and also guitar repair um, there's a always everybody always wants to make a birdhouse that's always a, a good a good thing to do and um, I know that we have a lot of musicians in our house who would you know probably want to come down and make a, a dulcimer you know a lap dulcimer of some sort or or whatever um, somebody mentioned somebody who does uh, spinning and spins wool mentioned that she wouldn't mind coming down and learning how to make her own spindles and then she could sell those and uh, I had never thought that she would ever be down here and I thought how cool would that be to have her come down and, and have somebody show her how to how to turn wood on the lathe and you know some of the other machines that I would love to get as crowded as it looks um, my hope is to have machines on wheels and a few of these things in the corner are going to be cleared out so that there's room to store machines and then I can pull machines out um, a machine that I would love someday to have is, is an oscillating spindle sander what that is is a, a machine that that it has a, a round uh, cylinder of and there's different sizes of those cylinders and you put a sleeve on top of that uh, of sandpaper and then that sleeve moves up and down and turns and um, you can do something like that with a drill press but the thing is is that a drill press isn't made to push sideways this oscillating spindle sander is 
and you can use that to sand on the inside of curves. So if we're making guitars, making dulcimers, doing different repairs, you can use a, a sander like that and, and um, really clean up the insides of things a lot easier. Um, I think that's one of the main things I'd love to have uh, that I don't, and those things are kind of pricey. Um, but our main issue at this point that we really need to work on, besides getting these machines 100% working, uh, is dust collection. Running ducts to everything, having everything um, plugged in, dust collection, air filtration, and uh, you know, be able to keep the shop cleaner. I'd also like to have goggles and uh, air, air masks at each station too. I think a lot of times we just want to make a quick cut so we don't want to go search down, search for goggles and masks and things like that. And then, you know, we're just going to make a quick cut. Well, if there's a, a, a set of goggles just hanging there right by the, the drill press, well, you put those on, make your hole, put the goggles back, go to the next place. And I know things aren't going to be perfect and someone won't remember to put the goggles back or whatever, but I figure the more goggles and air masks and things like that we have available, the more people will use them. Um, I'd love to have some shop safety signs um, showing, you know, the horrible hands getting cut off and things like that 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 can remind us that we do need to be safe. This isn't uh, this isn't a playtime down here, um, and I'd like to show people how to use the machines. Uh, the ones that I know how to use, I'd like to show people how to use them. The ones I don't know, I'd like to learn and have some people come in and and give us some seminars. I have contacts or connections on oldwoodworkingmachines.org. Lots of friends on there who I've met who would love to come for an evening and just do a, a demo on uh, the lathe or do a demo on a jointer, do a demo on the radial arm saw, teach us things. And, and there's always something to learn no matter how long you've been woodworking. I, I'm still surprised when I've gone to a few demos and I see these old guys that I think they know everything and yet they're at this demo because there's probably something that they're still going to learn. So there's a lot we can do down here. And it's not a huge space, but it's not small. I'm really thankful we have this. And um, it's come a long way since I last did a film. Uh, I can't remember when. I'm sure it was over a year ago that I did uh, a little video. And I've gotten rid of some tools, gotten some new tools, worked my way up. I kept wheeling and dealing on Craigslist and... and um, um, I'm excited for people with the holidays coming up I'm excited for people to come down and start making gifts and doing different things um, still working on storage of some things working on putting wheels on the machines like over here on this on this uh, bandsaw there's wheels right there those that frame will adjust and uh, go underneath the uh, bandsaw and then we can roll that bandsaw out of the way pull it back out when we want to use it and so that way things aren't all blocked up like over there, like they are over here now. This is not how I want it to be. You know, I don't want this, uh, all three of those just tucked in there. You can't even use anything, you know. I'm hoping everything can be accessible. And it's a slow, pro you know, making progress slowly. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting. But in general, um... It's come along well, and I'm excited how far it's come, and um, 